All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Rocket Vlogs. In today's installment of building a fiberglass high power rocket, I'm going to teach you guys the art of the internal fillet. Um, but before we get into that, uh, my decision to use CA to tack the fins and rings in place was called into question. So I thought I'd explain a little bit more why that's not going to be an issue, even with this rocket that is uh, hopefully going to see an end motor within the near foreseeable future. So if you guys will recall, I drilled these holes for injecting the internal fillets. It's really nice with fiberglass kits because you can see what's going on. You can see the bead of epoxy that's holding the centering rings in on each end. Now, what's going to happen, if you can look right there too, you can see, like we discussed last time, the fins are seated very nicely against the centering ring. So by the time we have epoxy injected through here, I'll be able to come in here and show you. You can actually see really nicely the roots of the fins glued um, very consistently all the way down inside the motor tube as well. I'll be able to show you very clearly the uh, fillets that are going on inside there when I'm done with them. Effectively, we're ruling out that joint by the time we have internal fillets done because we're creating one structural piece from ring to ring from the fin to the motor tube. So effectively, we're making this all one big unit. So the joints with the motor tube to the centering ring with CA and the fins to the motor tube with CA are going to be overruled by the fact that epoxy is going to be attaching everything. Let me give you an example. This is the fin can for my four inch Punisher, which uh, if you guys watch my videos, you recall an Argonia on its way down, the nose cone clocked the fin hard enough to completely destroy the leading edge of the fiberglass but the fin is still solid, and if that's not convincing enough for you, we'll even take it a step further, huh? See that? It needs to be painted anyway, don't worry. One big piece. Any more questions? No? Good, let's make some fillets. All right, let's talk supplies. I use these uh, Walmart oral syringes you can get them for free at the Walmart pharmacy and actually if you clean them out decent enough with alcohol uh, we use denatured alcohol usually I think there might be some around here somewhere but I can't find any so we just got the isopropyl not an easy thing to find right now neither are these gloves but I highly recommend finding some if you're going to do this uh, you get these for free at the pharmacy this one has been used on I believe my three inch punisher my four inch punisher and my dad's level three rocket the stinger Chop carbon fiber, I have a whole bunch of it because uh, I didn't want to wait for regular shipping from Tim, so I ordered it from eBay, a place that said they would ship it in two days, and that took a week to get anyway, so I should have just ordered it from Tim. But anyway, right now I have half a pound of chopped carbon fiber, so I guess I'm going to need to buy some more rockets, um, paper towels, and these uh, empty frosting containers make uh, great epoxy mixing cups. Now, you can just use popsicle stick, stir it as usual but if you're lazy like me what I like to do is get the carbon fiber broken into the epoxy pretty well by hand and then I take one of these spade bits I actually had one that I cut the pointed end off of specifically for this purpose but I don't know where it went but uh, just throw this on a drill and uh, go around the edges of the cup let it sit out flat so you can mix the carbon fiber in there really well you want to be kind of careful adding carbon fiber a little bit at a time because you want it to be fully impregnated in the epoxy to basically look almost black, almost the color of carbon fiber. You want it to be fully impregnated, obviously, but you don't want to make it so thick that you're not going to be able to get it to settle where you want it. But uh, if you don't mix it in there good enough, the carbon fiber is just going to bunch up when you inject it, and then all the carbon fiber is going to sit in one spot, and all the epoxy is going to run out of the carbon fiber, which is not ideal. Like I said, I've had it go wrong plenty of times seen just about every bad scenario there can be to the point where I've uh, made it to pretty decent scenarios. So we're going to start mixing some epoxy. I always use West Systems. I've used Aero Epoxy. I have some over there actually. Rocket Epoxy, all that stuff. Rocket Epoxy you would not want to try to inject. Aero Epoxy you could use. But uh, I've just been using West Systems for years and years and it's always been good to me. So that's what we're going to do. I keep kind of forgetting how big this rocket is, and I'm not really sure how much epoxy I'm going to need. Um, my dad just did his six inch stinger not too long ago, and I think he said he did three pumps and may have needed to make more. Um, I think the fin root on this is 
about the same, but that's a six inch rocket with a 75 millimeter mount, so I don't have nearly as much volume. Well, hopefully that is enough, because seems like after eight years or so, we've finally run out of West Systems epoxy. Yep, I've been using the same epoxy for eight years. In fact, that four inch Punisher is also built with this West Systems epoxy. What I have noticed about West Systems is as it gets older, it starts to turn brownish. Uh, the hardener does anyway. Um, I'll be in Salt Lake City this coming week and they have a West Marine dealer. So I might see if uh, I can get some on down there. So what I like to do is wear rubber gloves when I'm putting the chopped carbon in and rub my fingers together and really try and break it up as much as possible. This stuff actually mixes in a lot easier than the, the actual West System stuff. You can see that actually filled in really nicely. And it's pretty thick, pretty quick. So. I'm just going to keep mixing it, try and get as many of these fibers broken down as possible. Actually might see if I can coax one more pump of epoxy out of the can over there because this stuff thickened up real quick. I want it to be a little bit runnier than that. Alright, note to self, this carbon fiber uh, mixes in a whole lot a lot easier than the kind you get from West Systems. Nice, um, not a bad thing, just uh, wasn't expecting that. So I did manage to coax another pump out of it. It's still pretty thick. You can see it's very, very well impregnated with the carbon fiber. There's not a lot of chunks left in there. It's just kind of a, a, a carbon fiber batter, if you will. All right, here is my method. This is why you want it to be, well, for one reason, you want it to be fairly pourable. Because this is how I do it. We're just going to fill her up to the top. I'm going to put about uh, half the syringe in these middle two holes. We'll start from there. And then hopefully we should only need about a quarter front and back, and then I'll do the... Uh, the old pivot rock and roll. It's just thick enough that you have some time to uh, get the end of her in the hole there. There you go. Nice and easy. About halfway. Pull it out just a little bit so we don't uh, make a giant mess. Good. Into the next one. Boom, push her in, and there you go, injected fillets. If I need to get a couple more pumps of epoxy out of that can, I probably can. Um, we're going to move on to the next side and uh, let that side settle out and I'll see if I need to pump some more in there to get it to fill out a little bit better. We'll see. It's just a, uh, it's a process. You got to watch it and um, like I said, that's what's nice about fiberglass kits is you can see through them. So you can actually watch the epoxy as it's in there, obviously. It's not like external fillets. You can't just uh, go in there with a popsicle stick and sculpt it to the shape you want. But you can very much control the outcome. And uh, after I get these injected, I'll take these gloves off and kind of give you guys some insight what's going on in there. All right. Now here's the fun part. Cleanup time. I highly, highly recommend denature alcohol, but we don't have any, so acetone's gonna have to do the trick for me. Um, it works fine. See, uh, I don't know if you can see that very well. All these reflective shiny points on the rocket are parts where I dripped epoxy and I wasn't, I was telling you to pull the plunger out, but then not doing it myself. Um, it's all over the fins and stuff. I promise you, promise you, you will hate yourself if you let that epoxy dry because it is not fun to sand. So we just go through a little acetone, 
get her nice and cleaned up. Obviously there's still some little tidbits and stuff. You can see the little bits of carbon fiber laden epoxy that are no longer stuck to the rocket now. Now the next trick is to take an old epoxy mixing container. Oh, gotta make sure I clean this off too. Our old friend the spade drill bit. Um, with how easy that carbon fiber mixes though, I don't think I'm going to need that trick because it soaked it up instantly. So, stuff this full of paper towels and it's like uh, getting rid of old household grease, if you will. Just uh, pour it in and there you go. You need a little bit more. And then what we like to do Take our plunger, throw that in there. And we're out of paper towels. We're running out of everything today. Poxy, paper towels, you name it. You just make sure our plunger is nice and epoxy free. All right. Then we're going to take the actual syringe part. Cover up the ends. All of this in effort to be able to use it again. All right, here's the technique, right? Like I said, with West Systems Epoxy, you got a lot of time before it dries. So I like to tilt it one way, then tilt it the other, let everything kind of smooth itself out. The beautiful part about internal fillets is gravity does most of the work for you. All right, so now you guys can see what's going on in here. Like I said, the carbon fiber that I used this time uh, mixed up a lot quicker and thicker than I'm used to with the other stuff. So these didn't quite come out as pretty as some of my others have. Uh, I'll post a picture of the inside from the 4 inch one. Um, you can see this side like I was talking about. The, uh, the epoxy kind of ran out of the carbon fiber so uh, there's just some good clumpage there. It's a little bit harder to see on camera but you can kind of see that there's still a good uh, 3 or three eighths to half an inch of epoxy resting up in there and you can tell that there's carbon fiber in it just not as much as on this side. It, uh, spread it out a little bit better after I put an extra pump of epoxy in there That's all right. You can see that the uh, Carbon fiber Chunking up is kind of letting the epoxy run out onto the fin a little tiny bit, but that's no big deal either uh, We can sand that out or probably won't even bother. We'll just lay fillets over top of it. That's not a big deal, but uh, yeah, so for the next ones, definitely we'll uh, be a little more careful with the mixing the carbon fiber in because I was telling you guys to do exactly that and then did the opposite. So, you know what they say, hindsight is twenty twenty. But uh, you can worry if you want to. I'm not going to. There's still a lot of epoxy and a good amount of carbon fiber in there chunked up. That's uh, Those aren't going anywhere. So, yeah, we'll let those settle out and... Uh, with any luck, the carbon fiber will uh, settle out a little bit better on that right side just over time. Like I said, the best part about internal fillets is that uh, gravity does most of the work for you. You want to show them your rocket? Because I don't think we've uh, discussed your level 3 plans on the channel yet. The stinger? Yeah. Buzzworthy. Mm hmm. I don't. This one's technically a rocketry warehouse kit, I think, because I got it from. Mike over at Bay Area Rocketry because yeah. I was going to buy it for him for Christmas and then Mad Cow pulled it off their website like entirely. So I started calling people to see if anyone had one laying around and Mike did. But uh, the classic nose cone shoulder conundrum, pull that out. That's it. <laughs> That's as far in as the coupler will go. That's kind of like uh, my 3 inch Punisher is very similar, but it doesn't have, like on the Punisher you can see the transition where it's like uh, intentionally, you know, left cylindrical before it starts turning into a cone. This doesn't have that, so it only lets it go in, what, 2 inches maybe? Yeah, about 2 inches, yep. But, sure pins 
should hold it. Yeah. It's a little less than ideal, but... The good news is right now, I guess, from what I understand, is the... Uh, oh, yeah, you want to show them your recessed electronics bay? So you can fit the... Fit the... Uh, 5120 in there? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, as far as I understand what Greg was saying right now, the rules state that if you accidentally chuck the main at Apogee... You can still be level three certified now, but yeah, I'm sure pins are gonna be fine. Even if you have to stack them a little bit, and run six of them just to be safe. Mm -hmm. Nothing a little black powder won't solve, but I can't imagine it's going to be a problem. But it's actually supposed to be go lower and, or going lower than my level three flight. It simulates like ten and a half, right? Because it's a chonker, it's a heavy rocket, but it's cool. Was it's like four and a half feet tall? Yeah, almost five. It's supposed to have flown already twice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Same with my level three. Three, what, two or three launches that I was supposed to go to for my level three flight, and then work, and then I drove halfway across the country. Mm -hmm. But I got it now. But uh, yeah, so these fillets didn't quite go as planned. I would say I'll come back tomorrow and do another set. Um, knowing what I know about the carbon fiber, it should be easier to get him to settle out properly. All right, so the heater's on in the garage, so you guys are gonna hear that. Sorry about that, but uh, everything, this epoxy's been sitting for four or five hours or so, so it's gelled up enough that it's not gonna run anymore. And with it actually sneaking out that little joint there, I can touch it and test it, and it's not uh, sticking to my finger. So I'm gonna see if I can coax a few more pumps of epoxy out of our uh, West Systems jug here. Maybe try and do one more set of fillets and show you guys what they look like when I do it properly. Um, these smoothed out a little bit more, but uh, yeah, not not what you like to see, but still, like I said, there's still a good three-eighths of an inch or so of epoxy on that side. And the carbon fiber is pretty consistently contacting everything we needed to to about there and then uh, it's good there and then there's a little gap there and then a little gap to the end of the fin where it's just mostly epoxy with a lot less chopped carbon in there but uh, I won't hesitate to stand on this one either once it's got external fillets I'll do it before it's painted though the four inch one just needs repainted so it didn't really matter that much Basically the end goal here is you want it thick enough that it's not going to flow through any small openings there like you saw it leaking a little bit because we separated from the chopped carbon on the last batch. Also want it thin enough that it's going to level itself out and uh, be smooth. But uh, there you can kind of see better, hopefully. The epoxy itself is taking on like a gray color and uh, yeah, it's very well dosed, I guess, with uh, chopped carbon. All right, this is what you want. Nice, consistent flow all the way down the fin line. It softens up a little bit in the front there, but like I said, when you have the uh, right ratio going for you, chopped carbon to epoxy, you can just uh, a little tilt her forward a little bit, and then uh, set it back down, let gravity smooth everything out again. Maybe someday I'll build an actual curing oven, but for now, this is the play. Is it stupid? Yes. Is it working? Also yes. All right, so, you can see we got the uh, slightly uglier fillets on the top there. There we go. This is our newer set. Um, like I showed you guys towards the end of the video yesterday while I was shooting, it was leaking a little bit. So you can see very back there where a bunch of carbon fiber dammed up. So actually, once the epoxy ran out of where that carbon fiber is at, it just kind of stopped letting it uh, leak down. So we didn't have any drastic issues. Um, my dad and I managed to catch it in time so we could keep it from making a big giant mess. Shoot a little more epoxy in there. And I might, I might come back and drill some new holes on this side where we had the carbon fiber build up from me making it too thick. 
and uh, get a little smoother pour there. But again, um, you can kind of see it if I shine a flashlight through the airframe. Hold on. There we go. You can see the. Uh, there's definitely no uh, lack of epoxy in there, and uh, everything did. I don't know how well you can make out the shape of that, but it uh, it actually did settle down pretty well right where we needed it so um we do have it running from ring to ring all the way up and down each one of the fins so um is there really a need to add more epoxy in there no and really that's just going to add more weight that we don't need to really be concerned about the carbon fiber didn't distribute very evenly which is evident but the epoxy still did so that doesn't really matter um, we had a little bit of epoxy run down so now the uh this side on the next set is uh well there's an epoxy dam there now so we shouldn't have any running issues not to mention the back sides of them all have epoxy now too so there's no more for the epoxy to run so the last set should be pretty straightforward uh not going to leak and uh, we'll be more careful like we were with the uh, carbon fiber on the second set um, after that internals are done i found a store out in utah that stocks this west systems epoxy so while i'm down there this weekend i'm going to pick some up We'll get this last set done, we'll set those up, and we'll make some external fillets, and uh, then I can show you guys my uh, painstaking process to making my fillets as nice as I possibly can. I've gotten pretty meticulous about the shape and outcome of them, as you can see on the three and four inch punishers, and then uh, I definitely got it from my dad, as you can see. The uh, iris, not so much. Don't look at those fillets, Red Max. Still need to do that. I still want to fly like an L900 in that. We'll uh, we'll we'll get there. We need to build some rockets and actually fly them before I build any more rockets. But hey, one of the things I'm most excited about working on this winter is uh, in this box right here, the Lock Precision seven and a half inch Saturn V. I'm a big Apollo nerd, so when when uh, the boys over at Lock announced that that was coming out, I uh, made sure I was in a position to uh, purchase one of those and they launched them so there it is thank you guys for tuning in once again to another episode of rocket vlogs my roommate is uh building his three inch punisher to make another attempt at his level one if you've been around for a minute you'll uh, remember that he fiberglassed an old pml callisto kit that we re-kitted and he built it and he went for this level one and i500 and shredded it so he wants to do the i500 or the i600 again i have an i600 for him back there and uh, we're gonna do a three inch punisher. It'll take it, no problem. But uh, we both work like 65 plus hours a week, so it's kind of hard lining up the schedule for when we're both home to uh, film working on his rocket. But uh, it's mostly built, just needs some more external fillets and sanded and painted. I'll be doing the paint job for him because that's kind of my rocketry forte. But uh, yeah, if you wanna help see some of these rockets get finished and flown next year, we're looking at. Uh, some pretty expensive flights. <laughs> so check out rocketvlogs.com. I got a whole lineup of uh, high power rocketry t-shirts available via Teespring. They ship directly to you. I don't touch them, so that means you'll get them in a reasonable time frame. Uh, there's stickers and phone cases and stuff like that too. I need to order myself one of my hoodies actually so I can wear it in these videos throughout the winter. But uh, yeah, five inch punishers moving along. Not as smooth as we'd like it to be, but hey, that's kind of how it goes. Uh, there's a difference between building a rocket and assembling it, and I feel like the building differentiates a lot in solving issues you run into. There's been plenty, too. We got the leakiness, the carbon fiber not wanting to spread out because I mixed too much of it in, the coupler getting stuck in there. You live and you learn, right? We'll see you guys in the next episode of Rocket Vlogs.